if there is a weekend you could call big game weekend, this is it in the NFL. And Chris Carter of Locked On NFL is here to tell us all about it. Just a second. The barber shop is open and Tony Wiggins has a chair for you. He's ready with some real NFL talk. The local experts of Locked On bring their expertise. And Wiggy is ready with his clippers and shear. Sit down and enjoy. The new Locked On NFL starts now. Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Right. It is your team every day here on Locked On NFL. We thank you for making us your first listen. And welcome to Locked On NFL, where we talk about the biggest stories from around the NFL with the help of local experts that know your favorite teams like no one else. Today's local expert is my man, Chris Carter, and we're going to talk about the Thursday night football game between the NFC East, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Washington Commanders. They're going to bow for first place, and we didn't think we'd have that conversation 10 weeks in. Chiefs, getting back help. They need it. Well, you could say they need it. They're winning. They haven't lost, but I think it's going to come up. They're going to need everything they can down the stretch. And then about for the AFC North, we have the best person to talk about that today, and that is Chris Carter. Prior to doing that, I got to let you know that today's show is brought to you and sponsored by, as are all of our crossover episodes around the network on Thursday, by Prize Picks. Download the app and use the code Locked On NFL to win fifty dollars instantly when you play. Want to let you know also, listen every episode. Listen to every episode of Locked On NFL now on Amazon Music. Make sure you go and check that out. Good morning, Mr. Carter. How are you, sir? Good morning, Tony. How we doing? No, oh, man, we doing good because we got a battle. We finally got games on the weekend that mean more uh, to just the people that are watching them in those local areas. I think the entire NFL is going to be glued to the television this weekend and no no better place to start than a game that you and I have been talking about for probably seven weeks. Remind everybody how many times over the last eight games the Pittsburgh Steelers have beaten the ball right of course they're seven and one in their last eight games and uh <laughs> um it's 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 certainly been a thing but but you know this is also going to be what's crazy is it's what it's week 11 right now this is the first division game for the Steelers uh all season which is crazy wow. to think. uh but the the NFL wanted to schedule up uh because they, they got hard knock going to all the AFC North teams uh, in, in these upcoming months there they're already there taking up half the parking lots at, 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 at the at the at the Steelers and Pitt facilities so I've, I've been having to deal with that already. Um, but, um, but yeah, so it, it's really exciting. It's the first AFC North game for the Steelers and it, it's a seven and two team versus a seven, three team. Like these are two teams that are, that are putting themselves in position to, you know, if the chiefs slip up at all, that maybe either one of these teams could be the team that chases them down for that one seat. Pittsburgh has unsung hero, Russell Wilson. I think you get it's sort of unsung. There are a lot of great players on their defense. People forget that they have great players at every level because you got to talk about Mika Fitzpatrick. And then up front, they got Hall of Famers. In the middle, they have Hall of Famers. It's the quarterback situation, though, that's going to really, I think, determine this game. And we have to remember where the quarterbacks came from. We know about Russell Wilson. And when you look at Lamar Jackson, you think, wow, he is so great. But people don't really think about how. He has been really, really developed, and he's playing at a super high level, probably better than any of those MVP seasons. Listen to Kevin Ostracker talk about the journey of Lamar Jackson. We see Lamar and the evolution of him coming out of Louisville. There was a lot of work, but that's for most rookie quarterbacks. In fact, that's for all rookie quarterbacks. Lamar was not exclusive in that, but that's how he was treated. Right? Lamar was treated coming out of college as if there's never been a player who needed to evolve. Every quarterback needs to evolve coming out of college. Every quarterback needs work. Every quarterback needs to refine different parts of their game. That's just what it is. Every young rookie quarterback needs that. So for Lamar, he's responded to that negativity and the doubt with eloquence and and grace and just kind of put his head down and, and went to work. And here we are, a player that, is on track to win his third MVP. A lot of respect from both the dislike and respect. Uh, like it, it's, it's a different kind of dislike, but it's the dislike or respect coming from both of these franchises. I think sometimes when people criticize Lamar, they forget 
how many quarterbacks were drafted in the first round, hide in the first round, either, whether it's Marcus Mariota or Jameis Winston or even the recent guy, that have not developed. And they look at it through a lens of comparing Lamar Jackson to the all-time greats when they probably should be comparing them to the guys that have been drafted over the last seven or eight years that have failed to start after this third set. Trey Lance, I mean, you can think of all of these dudes, and I just think that the people that put Lamar down don't realize that it's a self-ratio because you're comparing them to the absolute best instead of the guys who developed who were thought of to be just like them. Yeah, and here's the other thing. Um, I, I I think comparing them to the other guys that, are, that, that have been drafted around him doesn't even do him justice. I think Lamar Jackson is an all-time quarterback. He's a two-time MVP. It's about to be a three-time MVP if, if, if things keep going his way uh, this season. Um, Tony, I, I, you know, when, when, I'm, I, when I cover the Steelers and I'm at the Mike Tomlin uh, Tuesday press conference, he calls him Mr. Jackson. He don't say Lamar. He don't say Lamar. Jack- he says that's Mr. Jackson. And, and uh, or another reporter tried to ask him, well, you guys just, just defended Jaden Daniels again in the run game pretty well. Uh, he's like, listen. He's like, you know, not to, not to slight anyone, but, you know, you'd be kind of slow if you were to compare Lamar Jackson to anybody in the NFL. And it's that respect of Lamar Jackson that the Steelers have that I think is why they've been so successful against him. He as a quarterback hasn't, hasn't started. He's, he's also missed a lot of games with injuries. Uh, but um, he hasn't beaten the Steelers since 2019 as a starter. Mm-hmm. So um, I think part of it is they respect him. They, 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 they know the factors that he brings to the table. Um, and you know, that, and that's why these, these always go down to the wire. Um, and I think other people do well, you know, I remember co- covering Lamar Jackson, uh, you know, it, coming, coming into the NFL draft and saying, the Steel- I thought the Steelers should have took him. Um, and I, I thought he was, you know, they, they, and it was so funny. I remember arguing with Steelers fans like Mason Rudolph's better. And I'm like, no, he's, no, he's not. No, he's not. Um, uh, you know, and, but like to, to Kevin's point, a lot of people thought that he needed it. It, it was all these narratives about, oh, he couldn't read it. I, I remember putting out there like I actually think he, he's one of the he was one of the better quarterbacks in that draft class at reading defenses yeah and someone told me he can't read a deep uh, a book let alone a defense and I'm like okay obviously we know where that's coming from uh yeah. but um but in, in, in all seriousness you know I, I was when people say like man just put that dude in a system or in, in an organization that lets him grow uh, like Kevin said every quarterback needs to grow and he's grown up very well I think it's just a shame that the Ravens haven't given him better players, you know, because some of the times that, that he's lost to the Steelers, it hasn't really been his fault. Last year, he did throw an interception to Joey Porter Jr., but he also had like three touchdowns dropped by his team in that game. And if they catch any one of them, they probably win. So, um, you know, Lamar Jackson's a heck of a quarterback, and the Steelers recognize that. That's why they, they, they bring it every time. I think one thing that's going to be really interesting to see, can this Steelers defense that currently ranks number two in the NFL, can they still play at a high level and keep these guys bottled up? And can the Steelers' offense capitalize on a, on a Ravens' defense that's been pretty bad so far to start the season? I think uh, you make a great point uh, about Lamar Jackson because it happened to me at Jacksonville. The, Blake Bortles was the quarterback. They just got to the AFC Championship, and I'm like, take Lamar Jackson. Yep. Blake had one more year in his contract, got a fifth-year option. They extended him to two. They took Taven Bryant. And I'm thinking, like, folks are saying, well, he doesn't throw. I said, does Blake Bortles throw? You saw Blake mm-hmm. Bortles in Pittsburgh. He barely they, they they beat Pittsburgh that year that they went to the championship game, mm-hmm. but it was because of him. It was because of Larry Fournette in the defense and Jalen Ramsey and you know, all those dudes. The thing is that sometimes you almost have to be there. Quick story about Brick Blair where you can't look at stat. Look at Lawrence Taylor's stat numbers and there's about 10 guys in front of him. It doesn't even talk about the fact that it was a running league that for half of that time the season was 14 games instead of 16. And they tried to get away from him. I asked Tom Coughlin about him and compared it to, at that time, a three-time MVP, J.J. Watt, to prove a point to a former radio host of mine, a buddy of mine. And Tom Coughlin just said, oh, God, no. Like, there's nobody to compare to Lawrence Taylor. And Bill Belichick has even said it just the same way Mike Tomlin talked the other day. Belichick said, don't compare anybody to Lawrence Taylor. You just can't do it unless you were there. You can look at the numbers and stats all you want to, but we are seeing something there. We have never really seen before the way Lamar is doing. All right, the Chiefs are the standard bearers right now in the AFC. They really played like it. They're going to get some help back. We're going to hear from them and talk about their prospects uh, moving forward here on the, on the NFL. Today's show is brought to you and sponsored by Hillsdale College. That's right. You want to learn? I know sometimes it can be expensive, but guess what? It's not expensive. The Hillsdale, they offer a lot of classes for free. I want you to listen to this. 
Time is most precious. It's our most precious commodity. So don't waste it. Spoil it. Do the same line on the contract for our crowd. I can in wise to improve yourself. Our sponsor, the only thing college is offering more than 40 free. That's right. Free. F R E E online courses, including Constitution 101, the meaning and history of the Constitution, introduction to free market economics, the great American story, a land of hope, and the rise and fall of the Roman Republic. All of Bill's Dale's courses are self fenced so that you can start whenever and tune in whenever. Plus, you can go deeper with readings, quizzes, discussions, or just enjoy the lectures. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost. And it's easy to get started. That's Hillsdale, H I L L S D A L E dot E D U slash locked on to register. Hillsdale dot E D U slash locked on. Today's show is also sponsored and brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. That's right, man. FanDuel is the absolute truth. And even if your team isn't playing well, you can still make it some money. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet five dollars and get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place. Live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play, and so much more on the same page where you your just visit fanduel.com to join today you get started with 150 dollars of bonus bets if you win your first five dollars that's fanduel.com never waste a hunt and make every moment more of a fanduel an official sports book partner of the nfl fuck all right Rolling along on Locked On NFL here over a big weekend in the NFL job by Chris Carter of Locked On NFL and Locked On Steelers. The Chiefs are trying to get some healthy people back. Of course, the one that they probably wish they could get back is Rasheed Rice, who was out for the season. This is another situation where you can't look at numbers. We talked about this before with Christian McCaffrey, where his replacement had a lot of yards, but the overall offense didn't have the same impact. Well, I think the same thing ring true. Isaiah Pacheco because he is one of the people, Chris, that you kind of just get tired of time. It reminds me of Matthew Mark. It's like if you ain't bring me a lunch pair today, this is going to get on your nerve when it comes to defending Isaiah Pacheco. Huge news for the Kansas City Chiefs. They are bringing back Isaiah Pacheco and Charles and Minnie They are going to open their practice window. It is a 21 day window for these players to practice and be activated to the active roster. This is huge for Kansas City. Bringing back Pacheco, adding him to the backfield, adding him to Hunt, gives them the ability to have a one-two punch, gives Hunt a little bit of a break. He has been carrying the ball a ton so far this season. Something to watch there. Charles Aminiku coming back gives the Chiefs another edge rusher that's going to help them in their chase for a three-peat. These are two huge potential moves. It does sound like Juju will be practicing as well. So you could have all three of these players practicing when practice kicks off on Wednesday. That is something to watch for, and that's something to be expected. Watch for a lot more coming soon on Locked On Chiefs. Chris, my franchise has lost a lot, and uh, we appreciate winning because we don't do it a lot, and your franchise has won a lot, and you appreciate it because you know exactly how hard it is to do it. The people that talk about the Chiefs are barely winning. We don't care. The word barely doesn't matter as long as you get into the win. Yeah, I keep reminding people, like, hey, who cares if they're barely winning when you win that many times? Yeah, well, they've won nine in a row. They haven't lost. And if they keep, it, it, you know, if I if I keep barely winning, I keep, you know, stacking them wins and barely stacks up to nine. No, it does, does not. The margin does not matter when you are undefeated at the end of the season. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like, look, there are some times that they escape some of these games in some very yeah. close fashion and that, and it, it, it does kind of put it in, in a light. And I just say, like, hey, I get it. If your point is, I don't think that they'll be undefeated the entire season. I agree. Teams slip up at some point. And they got a lot of big games down the stretch here. They got the Bills this week. They got uh, the Chargers in, in, a, in a few weeks. They got the Texans a few weeks. That They have the Steelers on Christmas Day. Uh, the Broncos, who just took them to task, uh, are they going to play in Denver to end the season? Uh, they're not, I don't think they're going to go 17-0 and this season. But – Again, it just shows how great of a team that they are right now, how, how good of a situation they have set up. That defense is nasty. Patrick Mahomes isn't having his best year, but they're still finding a way to win. Uh, they're dangerous, and they're going to they're gonna make you honor a whole lot of things. And now they're getting back Isaiah Pacheco. Uh, 
I, I just I think that this is a this is a Chiefs team that people I, one I, one thing one thing is I get it. People are tired of the Chiefs winning because they've been winning for of uh, some years now. They've won what three Super Bowls in the last five years. They've yeah. been to four. four. Um, people are people are, are over it. Um, and, and they're and they're winning. And you just want to see. Like, oh, man, I just want to see them lose just one time. And you look at the Ravens game; they won by seven. The Bengals game; they won by one. The Falcons game; they won by five. The Chargers game; they won by seven. Uh, the Raiders game; they won by seven. The Buccaneers; they won by six. And then last week, last week they ever the Broncos they oh Broncos they got a thirty five yard chip field goal and it's blocked. Get out of here. There must be something going on. There must be some cheat. Nope. The Chiefs are just that good right now, y'all. You got to respect what they're doing. But, hey, this Bills team, they're they're the best. They, they might be the best team that they face the rest of the season because the Bills are red hot right now. I'm very intrigued to see how this matchup plays out. I'm intrigued, too. And I'm thinking that the way this thing is playing out, uh, that the Chiefs are going to be the number one seed. And because the Bills have an easy division, I think they're going to be the number two seed. And that's a good year because what, what's going to happen is – that's going to force the Bills to probably play the winner of this game between the Steelers and the Ravens before, and then the Chiefs will have to play the loser, who's the four seed, as long as I'm thinking that everybody makes it out of round one, which I think they probably will. Somebody that doesn't have to worry about that right now so much is Detroit. And, and this is going to be a little bit fun for me because if you watch Locked On NFL, I made fun of Matt Derry early in the year when Detroit lost their first game. And – once they lost the game, I put a clip up of Matt Derry talking about everybody else's business and, and talking about how everybody else hit their foot on the on the uh, the nightstand or hit their foot on the bed reel, going to the bathroom in the middle of the night. But he said nothing about the line. Well, he wasn't being petty. He wasn't being angry because they lost. The truth is, they haven't lost since. Matt Derry is still being Matt Derry. He's pointing out everybody else's foolishness, and I want y'all to hear. Here are the headlines around the league right now. The booming silence of the Aaron Rodgers experiment. All right, that's negative. About face, Colts turn back to Richardson at quarterback. Lions know who their quarterback is. Colts don't. Uh, homes of Mahomes and Kelsey burglarized last month. That doesn't really have anything to do with football. That's off the field. Raiders stick with Minshew at quarterback over Ritter. Vegas is a mess. Lions know who their quarterback is. Raiders don't. Uh, McNa- McDaniel ignores ex-player calling Dolphins soft. There's no former Lion players calling anybody soft, and no Dan Campbell isn't having to deal with any Lions alums trashing his team. Bears wave offensive guard Davis after late scratch versus the Patriots. So the Bears had a starter in Nate Davis. Now they've waved him. Stefanski, quote, Will, Will's comment, poor choice of words. If you didn't read about this, Jedrick Wills, the Browns left tackle, basically said he made a business decision a few weeks ago not to play in a game. So that was one. I'll skip the Mahomes one. One, two, Rodgers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven headlines I just mentioned. All negative, all cancerous, all toxic. That Colts quarterback situation, the Raiders quarterback situation. Bears having to wave a former starter. An offensive lineman on a team saying he made a business decision not to play. Former players trashing the team, calling them soft. Bear with me here. The Detroit Lions, are you ready? Our model franchise. Chris, I had to let him cook, man. Detroit hasn't been here very often, right? He, they haven't been here very often. And Matt, it, Matt, Matt is, I'm telling you, he is on the red carpet right now, and he is stunting on everybody because the Lions are finally doing something they never done. Hey, look, uh, yeah, I, I think that the Lions, they were my Super Bowl favorite. I picked them to win the Super Bowl before the season started. Let, let's chill on the model franchise thing. Because I know he's saying that they don't got no negative headlines. But I believe Jamison Williams just got off a of suspension for whatever he did, and he was gambling before that. Like, let, let's bump the brakes, Matt. I get it. Look, the Lions are a great team. They're doing an awesome job. Model franchise. Like, like, like the Detroit Lions, man. Like, I, I'm friends with so many people from Detroit. They went to law school with me. They're friends with me. And, like, I've sat to them from the pain. Like, I've got to put my hand on the shoulder. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm so sorry that Aaron Rodgers dropped the third Hail Mary on you in a row. It's ridiculous. So, like, what Dan Campbell, they are a very model team right now. I think, and I've said this before, and we've talked about this on this show. I think the Lions 
have gotten ahead of the curve as far as being one of those teams that understood you don't need to throw the ball all the time. You don't need to air it out and play this this Patriots Chiefs type of ball that they used to play. The Chiefs even have adapted from that. You need to control the line of scrimmage, run the football, play balanced offense, play physical defense, and they have embraced that better than most teams in the NFL. And that's why they're in this position. That's why I picked them to win the Super Bowl. But let's 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 not hop on just this week's of headlines. Don't involve the Lions because just a little bit ago it was all it, it, it was, there was some lines up in it that you didn't want that we didn't want to talk about so yeah, uh yeah. but but again they're one of the best teams in the NFL I still have them winning the Super Bowl this year because I think that they're really good the Aiden Hutchinson injury makes me pump my brakes a little bit yeah. but the, they're doing a lot of great things over there and and I, I thought they would this year yeah they do look good and it, it's not because their division isn't good their division is strong they yeah. have two other teams they might have the best division this year they just might, along with, you know, both North divisions, the AFC and the NFC North might be the two best divisions in football. And it's good to see other people sitting on that floor. And I really do. I told Matt Derry this yesterday in our crossover because the Jaguars played a lot. I think this is a long-term thing here. I don't think that this thing is going to fall apart like the Jaguars. No, I agree. And then they, they had two bad seasons. I, no, this thing, the way that Brad Holmes and the way that Dan Campbell put their fingerprint and put their DNA to the base of that franchise, I think them, and I believe Washington, they have built it and done it the right way. I'm not saying they're going to win a championship, but in order to win a championship, you got to have about a decade of relevance, right? And you have to have a decade uh, solid, whatever it is that gets you there, like the Seahawks did. They won one, but look at them. They were there, like the Colts did under Tony Dungy, like the Saints did under uh, Sean Payton. You got to hang around. You got to be there in order to get into that VIP room, right? They are there, and I think it's definitely going to last. We're going to preview Thursday night football, speaking of commanders. We'll do that in just a second here on Locked On the Access. Today's show is brought to you and sponsored by Prize Picks. It is the number one daily fantasy sports site in America and 10 million people. 10 million play and use it, and billions are distributed to them. Now, you don't have to play against all 10 million people. You know what you do? You just play against Prize Picks. All you got to do is download the app today and use the code locked on NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5. Lineup. Now, I'm telling you, man, you look at it, it's been between two and six player projections based on the stats that Prize Picks give you, and you have to determine whether or not it is more or less. Prize Picks is the way for you to go and get you some bread. Just remember to download the app today and use the code locked on NFL and get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. It is Prize Picks. All right, continuing on here on Locked On NFL. And as a reminder, just to let you know, Locked On NFL on Thursdays, and as are the rest of all of our crossover episodes, is sponsored by PrizePix. Make sure you download the app and use the code Locked On NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. Chris, big, big matchup in the NFC East tonight. This is not something that when I looked at the schedule, I did not plan on the team that I grew up rooting for, the Commanders to be this good after they got rid of Daniel Snyder. And the Eagles, with all of the talk about Nick Sirianni early on, I think we forgot about how well Allen Roseman built this team, listen to Locked On Eagles, and they were miners. It's so fun to watch this. I'm telling you, I think it's the improvement in the second and third level. Yeah, the defensive line, it's been great to see the improvement since the bye, and Mm -hmm. the Eagles having a good defensive line for years has always had this defense play at a certain floor, and you know, Bryce Hoff with a great strip sack today with basically one hand battling. Love to see that. Brandon Graham gets a sack. As you mentioned, like Jalen Carter dominated. But the difference between, like, why did 2022's defense look elite and last year's didn't, and now this one looks elite again? It's because of three players you added. It's the guys we were just talking about. It's Quinion Mitchell, it's Cooper DeJean, and it's Zach Bond, right? I mean, I just, mm-hmm. I think that's what it is, and all three of them hauled out again today. And did he not just even on defense, that punt return in the second half, that's what really put the game on ice, in my opinion. Hey, man, they fixed their secondary in one off season. They got two rookies, Quinlan Mitchell and Cooper DeGene, both thought to be first-round picks. They got one in the first, but one early in the second. Good on Philadelphia to finally do something right in that secondary. Yeah, and they really needed to because they got, you know, Darius Slay you know, was getting up there. 
you know, CJ Gardner Johnson can only do so much more. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how this how this Eagles secondary takes on this passing attack for the Commanders. This is a the, the, like you said, this is a big weekend of games. You get this game; it's your Thursday night game, and then you get Steelers, Ravens, you get Chiefs, Bills, you get Chargers, Bengals. You know, the, there's all sorts of talents lined lined up in this game, and also you know, say Jalen Hurts versus Jaden Daniels. That, that that's two big names. Uh, of athletic quarterbacks that get the job done, two running attacks that are that are dangerous right now uh, in in the NFL. Um, I, I'm I'm excited for this one, and, and and what's funny is is for all the things you know in, in, in the last 20 years or so that I've that I've been watching the NFL, the NFC East has been very contentious. You've had the Giants win two Super Bowls, the Eagles have won a Super Bowl, the Cowboys have always like you know been relevant even if they haven't won a Super Bowl since Super Bowl 30. Uh, but the one team that was often out of it was just the Commanders uh, in Washington, and they just they never were able to get the, their stuff together. And now all of a sudden they're competitive, and that does make this a very interesting matchup um, to see what it is. And it's it, it's refreshing to see. So I'm excited to see who, who gets the run game going first. Um, you know, you know, right now these are two of the top four rushing offenses. The Eagles average 176 yards per game. The Commanders add average 153 yards per game, so that they're both right right up there as far as uh, as far as that. The Commanders, they think they've had a little bit more success throwing the ball uh, so far, numbers wise this year. Um, but these but these defenses, they're also something to be reckoned with. The Eagles uh, rank number six and giving up 17.9 points per game. The Commanders are just outside the top ten at 21.7 points per game. So which which sets the tone? I think that's going to be really interesting to see because Jaden Daniels, even against the Steelers defense last week, kind of kept his head down. They, the Steelers ended up getting the win, but he didn't commit that big turnover that I thought that he might commit. They still ended up losing without it. But, um, you know, can he can he get things going this week against an Eagles defense that's also going to be looking for turnovers? Uh, that, that, I think that's going to be a really fun matchup, that secondary versus Jaden Daniels. There are there are very many people that remember this that I and I'll go back. Most people think of dominance. That if they think of conference or divisional dominance, they think of right now it's the SEC West, right? Yeah. Folks don't remember the Big East basketball. You know, back in the Dave Gavin days when John no, Old no, and all no, those dudes were hitting Georgetown, no. St. John, mm-hmm. and you're probably, you know, they don't remember that. But I'll I'll remind people of this with number between nineteen eighty six in 1996, the Dallas Cowboys won three Super Bowls. The Washington Commanders, they used to be something else, went to four and won three. The New York Giants won two. Okay? That's eight Super Bowls in like 11 years, man, and they were all in the same division. And the only team that couldn't win it, Philadelphia, and they went to the Super Bowl twice in the 80s. So the thing is, is, man, that used to be something really, really special, and I think that we get back to that. We got to wake the Giants and the Cowboys up, though. But listen to hmm. the crossover with the Eagles and Commanders. As a little bit of a, a, another preview as to how Washington got here before we see the game. Thursday night football, first place in the NFC East. What more could you ask for? We got you covered here on Crossover Thursday. Locked on Eagles, locked on Commanders. For first place in the NFC East, yeah. Let's just start there. Did you expect that this game, let's go back to when the schedule was made, was going to have this big of an implication come Thursday night? No, I mean I think I think it's hard for anybody to have predicted that, you know, this game would be for first place. And, and of course the most rabid commanders fan would love to stand there and say, like, I knew this was coming and I knew all that. And and that's fantastic, right? That's what fans are for. Like fans are fans are supposed to look at the rookie quarterback and the brand new head coach and the and the sexy GM and say 14 wins. Like, you know, nobody, nobody's going to stop this crew. And I love it. But, you know, being, being an objective observer, it's hard to look at a team with a new head coach, uh, you know, 60% or a turnover from the active roster from last season, rookie quarterback, uh, offensive coordinator, obviously new with the new coaching staff. And it's an offensive coordinator that a lot of people just didn't have a lot of expectations for coming back to the national football league. Chris, if, Anything what the Washington Commanders do is they provide hope for Carolina, Jacksonville, New Orleans, and a whole bunch of other teams, including the Titans, too, that if you get it right from a manager standpoint and you get it right up top, you can be Detroit. Sometimes it doesn't take three or four years. Washington is doing it in one. Hey, just need to get rid of your terrible toxic owner and then you'll be and then you'll be fine, right? Uh, but no, the commanders that again, 
I, I think that there's a lot of things that, that, that have to be accounted for. Now, here's the other thing. The commanders are doing it this year, right? You just talked about it. I we think the Lions are set up for a few for for a while now. I want to see the commanders be consistent here because they could be a flash in the pan. I remember when the commanders drafted back when back when they weren't the commanders, they drafted RG three. They were the future. They had everything lined up, and then they didn't. And then they fell into despair for another ten years, and now they're back here. They gotta they gotta keep building. They gotta keep their eye on the ball and doing. And it would it all starts with beating the Eagles this night, holding on to first place in the NFC East and finishing strong this season. What do you think they're going to do, man? you think they're going to be able to pull it off, or are they a little bit too green right now? To I, that? I got the Eagles winning because I like the Eagles' but overall balance of a team, but I wouldn't I wouldn't say that the commanders are completely out of this race. I I think that they, they, this is going to go down to the wire, but give me Philadelphia tonight, just something I'm feeling with, with Saquon Barkley in that squad. All right, you got it, man. Chris Carter is speaking the truth, and I know he got to get out of here and go and get to work. So we're going to let it go, but we ain't going to let y'all go because y'all going to come back tomorrow and check Tyler rolling out early in the morning. The madman will drop it like nobody else, man, when he lets you know exactly what's going on around the league with the help of local experts, and I'll be back to do the same thing right in the middle of the day here at the box shop. Chris Carr, for everyone else here at the Locked On Podcast Network, we thank you for joining our Thursday episode sponsored by Prize Picks, and we'll see you next time here on Locked On NFL.